Man, all right. So, Joe. Yeah. Welcome, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. How you doing? <laughs> doing good, man. So, uh, Joe Barker, you are a, is it a former professional bodybuilder or uh, amateur bodybuilder? How would you describe, what is that? Amateur. Amateur. Yeah, I never, never made it pro. No? Uh, got fairly close. I was top 10 national level a few years back in the mid-2000s. Okay. Um, competed pretty big names i've been on stage with uh steve kuklo mm -hmm. he's been he's been at the mr olympia he's competed right. in mr olympia uh i've been on stage with evan centipani he's been i believe at mr olympia been on stage with bill wilmore uh he actually trained me in 2010 he's been on stage in mr olympia so i've i've been on stage with some pretty big names do you have a nickname um Back in the day when I was a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because you're tiny uh, now. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, they just they just used to call me the beast. That the was beast. about it. Yeah. So that was your is that up in your gym somewhere? Does it say anything about beast? No, I had uh my weight belt. I had it embroidered on the back of my weight belt when I used to train really, really heavy. For some reason the font of the stuff at your gym reminds me of something that would say beast yep is that where it came from pretty much kind of ah. like the tearaway yeah style fonts. knew it yeah yeah <laughs> knew it yeah well man congratulations you're uh yeah. come up upon your one year anniversary of opening up your gym yep and that's always been a dream of yours right absolutely uh literally for over 20 years i mean i've been competitively bodybuilding since i was 19 and I've wanted to own my own gym since I was probably 23. Mm -hmm. So with other businesses and stuff, I had family businesses. I just, I wasn't able. Right. Uh, I was, my time was so covered, it, it just wasn't possible. And then the uh, past few years, things have evolved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to make some decisions and make it happen. Good for you, man. I know that... Uh, so the gym you have is a former former Olympic Health Club, and I used to work there when I was nineteen. Yep, right out of college as the morning manager for a short stint there, and uh, well, actually I worked there for about two years, and then trained there for for many years, and then um, you know I guess I had to grow up and be an adult and go get a real job, and uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I left there, went to many other gyms. But man, I got to tell you, when when I heard you were buying the gym. And you made a, some some great improvements, and I love love Joel to death. He's more to me, almost like a family member than he is anything else. And um, but the things that you've done to the gym to kind of just bring it around, help modernize it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when I walked through those doors for the first time, I felt like I was home. Yep. I, I don't know how really else to describe it. Yep. You know? Well, a lot of people don't know, and I tell the story every week. Um, Joel's gym was the, and you know, was the very first actual gym in Statesville. Correct. Anywhere. Um, you know, there was Grace Park, right. Rec Center, YMCA, but actual gym atmosphere, that yep. was the first gym in Statesville. And the first, I guess, privately owned gym. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And uh, that was the first gym I ever stepped foot in. Seriously? Yes, sir. When I was, uh, I was like 18, 19 years old. Yep. I had trained at home and at school all right. the other times. And uh, that was literally the first actual gym that I that I walked into. Joined there, started working out there, and now it's mine. So <laughs> I told somebody that, uh, you know, that was the first gym I stepped foot in and probably the last one I stepped foot out of. So Well, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, so I remember going to Statesville High School, uh, Coach Rankin, uh, who's known Joel forever, yep. uh, good friends with him, and uh, had – if you took weight training, you could go train at Joel's. It was like a field trip. Yep. You pay three bucks, and you would go train, and um, you could have access to the gym for the class period. And Joel would do a quick little speech kind of there in the background and – uh, in the back room, which is, uh, I don't know what you would call your back room now. It used to be his aerobics room, but now. Yeah. Um, and he would do a pose off back yeah. there. He would, he would pose and stuff like that. But I can remember being there thinking, this is where I want to train. And then having to be have the opportunity to work there a couple years later, to yeah. me, it was just like. Because Joel, to me, is like an Iredell County legend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Joel, uh, he. So. Um, late 70s and through the 80s yep. he was a uh, uh pro wrestler 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was he was like me. He was, at the time, the biggest guy around, you know. <laughs> uh, he was. I mean, he was a monster. His well, nickname was 747 because yes. his back was so massive, so big. Yes. I actually have one of his old T-shirts that says uh, Elliot 747 uh, on the back. That's but awesome. I cannot find it. <laughs> but he gave me a small, which yeah. <laughs> I think he was trying to give me a hint. Well, you know. <laughs> well, train harder. If, if, if you were nineteen, he was probably that was probably small to him. Then anyway, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, on, on, also with you opening the gym, you've got your one year anniversary coming up, and some big news, which I am super uh, excited for you. I'm excited for Statesville. I'm excited. Uh, for everyone that you're having the four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler. Yes, come absolutely. To your gym. Yep, yep. We've been, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, meet people and be in the industry so long. When I was competing and get to be friends with people, uh, good friend Kevin DeHaven, he's really, really great friends with Jay Cutler. They've been, they've been great friends for, I know, 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. And I've known Kevin for 20 plus years. Is um, Kevin from around here? or He is. He's in Huntersville. He owns uh, Elite uh, Fitness in Huntersville. Mm. He uh, in KD Con uh, Contest Prep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very, very knowledgeable. He's a good guy. Uh, he's got a lot of people. He trains and competes and stuff. Right. But uh, I talked to Kevin. Kevin was able to put me and Jay in contact. And uh, we were able to make it happen. And so Jay will be at the gym when? Jay is going to be at Genesis Fitness the 20th of April. So, of April, right. yes. So next weekend, not okay. this coming weekend, but next weekend on Saturday, Jay is doing a meet and greet from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. And uh, we are having the Statesville Chamber will mm-hmm. be there. Right. With it being our one-year anniversary celebration, we're doing ribbon cutting. Jay said he's happy to help out with that so i'm gonna have jay do a ribbon cut that's awesome and uh you know the fact that i had when we our first day grand opening i had uh our pastor come and you know he he blessed the the gym prayed with us and we've been blessed for this first year and we've got four-time mr olympia jay cutler doing our ribbon cutting i mean we've we've been beyond blessed oh absolutely Uh, i i have no complaints and uh we're just going to keep growing and uh, keep bringing states with good things. <laughs> Got a few more, a few more goodies Ooh, coming this man, year. I can't wait. And uh, but I mean, to my knowledge, and I could be wrong, uh, but uh, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody of his caliber has ever been to Statesville. Was it uh, there four-time world champion? No. I, I don't, I don't know that anybody with that type of title has ever been here. I want to say, was it a couple of years ago, maybe the light heavyweight Mr. Olympia came through here maybe? Or a competitor maybe finished top three? For some reason, I could, by the way, I could just be making that up, but it feels like that sounds right. But I'm not sure. it's still not, not sure. Jay Cutler. No, I mean, no there's you know, only one Jay no, Cutler. He's on the upper echelon of yeah. your of your Mount Everest of bodybuilders. Yeah. But I don't know. Who would you? Hey, you, you brought some product, right? I did. Let's sample uh, some of that while we chat. Yeah. We, uh, so what is this here? It is. This is uh, Jay's own protein. It's Color Nutrition. It's his line. Yeah. Uh, it's called Total Iso. And uh, it is awesome. It's, uh, I've, I've been through just about every protein on the market over the years. Mm-hmm. And as far as stuff that's easy to mix, stuff that tastes great, uh, you, you can't beat it. Um, it, it's just awesome. So this right here looks like it's the what is this now? The Coca cereal. So this it, is like a cereal flavor. Yeah, it. Uh, in my opinion, you can mix it with water, and it literally tastes just like Cocoa Puffs. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm Sounds Cocoa good. for Cocoa Puff. No, wait, uh, is it, is it, I'm Cuckoo for Cocoa yeah, Puffs. Yeah, that's, that's it. what that's it is. It. And look at here, our water today also Absolutely. sponsored by Genesis Fitness. That's right, and we brought some little shakers. Sweet. So, all right. So, I'm going to let you do the honors to show us how to do this. All right. I think this is the first uh, protein mix and drink we've ever had here on the show. <laughs> Eighty some episodes, and this is this is a first. Well, you know, we gotta we gotta do first somehow. So, let's see. 
And the interesting thing I think you were telling me about this protein was it's actually, well, is it made here? It's not made in Statesville. It's actually made here in Statesville by uh, Dynamic. Really? Uh, Dynamic Nutrition, yeah. Off uh, 115. Yeah. They uh, they make a lot of, lot of companies, huh. supplements. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I spoke with Jay last week, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, we talked and he, we were talking about his protein and, uh, he just said that he, he took, he took and takes pride in making design, helping design. He actually has a hand in designing his supplements. So they're more on the elite level of quality see that's something like if I ever had the opportunity to sit down with an athlete like jay who has his own product line i'm sure there's a lot of athletes out there who put their name on something yeah but someone like him and i would even like venture to bet ronnie coleman know and have a hand in what's going into the product yep you know like yep. i would love to sit down and talk to them about how did you you know it's not just the texture but it's the taste it's how how it, there's yeah. a whole thing to it oh yeah you know and how do you add do you have sugar do you not have sugar is it yeah. artificial sugar well and i i was talking to jay about this as well there's so many so many protein look here on cholesterol is less than 5 milligrams right okay almost all proteins have ton of cholesterol in them right and uh you know, his is his is the lowest I've ever seen. I so, mean, there there may be some out there that obviously right. I've not seen every protein, but the ones that I have seen, his has the lowest cholesterol milligram dosage of any I've ever seen in my life. And you're getting this is what 120 calories per scoop. It's one scoop per yep. serving. Yep. And 24 many, protein. 24 grams of protein. Yep. Okay. So what it's only one water gram in? total fat. Uh, only three carbs, zero sugar, zero sugar. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So just pour so, water. Yeah. And do you fill it all the way up? You go halfway. I, I usually do about, uh, 12, 14 ounces. Now you're making me do math. Oh, there it is. Also yeah. oh, nice on your bottles. It gives the, it has measurements ounces yeah. right there for you. Yep. Yep. All right. But yeah, and it, it does it. It mixes really well. But um, but yeah, and I'm I'm super stoked about Jay coming. Uh, he's an awesome guy, man. We, I think, first time we t spoke on the phone, we talked for like a half hour. <laughs> it was cool. You know, sometimes in the when I'm doing some sauna stuff, I'll cruise through YouTube. But to be fair, when I'm doing sauna stuff, I'm not supposed to be watching any of that business. <laughs> I'm supposed to be quiet, yeah. taking that 30 minutes to myself while I sweat my balls off. <laughs> you know, and, and supposedly this is doing so much good for the innards that I can't yeah. see. Yeah. But uh, I will sometimes listen to Jay Walks. You know, yep. he goes on these walks and stuff and talks. Yep. I think it's awesome to hear someone. Hey, man, cheers. Yes, sir. Let's see. It's good, I'm telling you. Mari had one this morning. Oh man! I tried to tell you. <laughs> it's oh, awesome. Man. Yeah, I feel like it's a bowl of cereal. Yeah, I feel like I should be crunching. Like I, honestly, in my brain, <laughs> my is. ears it's hurt, awesome. but it didn't happen. Yeah, it's man. awesome. And he has a couple other flavors too. <clears throat> like I have a lot of people that, uh, like people I've done nutrition for, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I. Obviously, I would suggest Jay's protein with his. He has one that's called a marshmallow, which okay. is basically the vanilla. Yeah, and because uh, they like vanilla, I said, "Well, you know, there's tricks to changing the flavor. You know, you can put sugar-free Jello gelatin powder in it sure. to change the flavor." And they, they're like, "We can do that, but the marshmallow is awesome." So they love okay. the vanilla too. Vanilla and marshmallow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't I believe know. it's called Marshmallow Crunch. Marshmallow which, Crunch. I think it's the name. Like, I I've got wanna... some at the gym. I, I try and keep it in stock now. I want to, for some reason, I want to chew this. It's so good. I don't feel like I'm <laughs> But yeah, we do, we do try and stock a lot of Cutler Nutrition stuff now. Right. Uh, don't have the entire line, but we've got a good bit of it. And um, mine's priced a dollar cheaper than Amazon. So <laughs> get out of here. A dollar cheaper than so Amazon. So everyone who's listening who wants to try it, don't order from Amazon. Stay local. Yeah. Support local and check it out. That's right. And we've got it in stock. You don't have to even wait next day shipping. 
So. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll tell you something else that I really appreciate about um, Genesis Fitness is the fact that you're open 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a yep. year. Nonstop. Uh, the, I remember now the reason I had to leave Joel's is because at the time when I became – I guess responsible. I was working uh, as a nurse in the emergency department and I w- had a shift from nine to nine and Joel closed at like eight or nine o'clock at night. So after my shift, I couldn't work and I didn't really want to go in and work out before my shift. Um, so now uh, I was going through a phase where I would be at your gym about four or four fifteen in the morning yep. and working out. And I loved it. You know, yep. it, it was fairly quiet, maybe one, two other people in there. Now I think people have caught on. So now there's like six or seven people in there. I think oh, they should yeah. go back to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like having my private gym. <laughs> um, but it's it's so awesome with the key swipe you get in, you do your you do your thing and you get out. And folks, for the most part, I mean, seem to be very respectable in there. Yeah. Um, you know, people are polite, which is all, always nice. You know, it's not a... You don't want to call it like a meathead gym because it's not. Some people may think that when they think about gyms in general. Yeah. But yep. not at all, man. You can see anybody from like 16 years old in your place to uh, damn 75, near 80. 75, 80 years old. Mm-hmm. And there is a large portion of uh, folks that um, join your place because you got 700 members now I that are we older. Hit 700 yesterday or day before. Yeah. Congra- in less than a yeah. year. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, but I think that's also helpful too that. In society, people used to be scared to go to gyms because they would be intimidated or felt like people would be, uh, well, they were just intimidated and yeah. nervous. But I think that stigma is wearing off. I think for the most part. There's yeah. still a few gyms around that, I don't want to say cater or welcome more of the, the muscle head type. Yeah, sure. Um, but, I mean, there's gym for every type. Absolutely. You know, there's... There's gyms for people that aren't really serious, that are more social. Then there's yep. people that want results. Then there's people that they just live and breathe right. the gym. But um, you get all that mine, in Genesis. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, for 20 years, I've, I've, I've said it before. I've got notes. I've got sketches. I've got ideas written in notebooks that old of stuff to have at a gym um, to accommodate anybody that's Never step foot into a gym, all the way to a pro level athlete can train yep. there. The other cool thing that you did, and I think it was the first one around here, um, was the you, you took the outside portion there that was parking lot, and then you turned it into an actual outdoor gym. You yep. took a lot of the old equipment and yep. repurposed it for yep. outside work uh, for um, yeah. a, a part of the gym there, which I think is awesome, especially yeah. in the summer. Oh yeah. It's nice to go outside and get some some vitamin D yep. while you work out. Yep. You know, I have I have basically fully covered it now, so yes. it, it is more shaded now. But you get the fresh air. You get fresh air. Um, I must you admit, know, we've we've got the speakers, we've got the fans going outside in the summer. So, mm-hmm. um, I do have a love hate relationship with your roof. <laughs> I love your roof outside in the winter because I like the heaters. But when it's nice and sunny, I want to see the sun. Yeah. 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 Well, well I'm taking I can't the curtains down probably today, actually. Oh, really? So, yeah. Okay. So you'll get that feel. Yeah. 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 So it uh, it won't be fully sunny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, you'll, you'll be able to get that fresh air. And uh, that's a lot of people love that. Love They feel like they can breathe better, uh, unless it's been like this week with all right. the pollen and the blooming stuff. But. Uh, for the most part, everybody likes the outside idea. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's nice, too, because it, it, let's say it is a little crowded, because like every gym, I think, on the planet around between, what, 5 and 6.37, yeah. place is packed. Yeah. So if you scoot outside, you can still get, yep. you know, some um, accessible equipment that's there that's comparable to what you're going to use on the inside. Yeah. So I think it's great. Well, it, it's older equipment, but it still works great. I mean, yeah. there's some equipment that's 30, 40 years old. actually works better than some of the newer stuff. It, it's amazing. I love the dip machine and, that's outside. Uh, you know, with uh, I've I've literally got at least three options to mm-hmm. work the exact same body part throughout the gym, either inside or outside. So unless you're waiting on an exact specific machine, mm-hmm. you should never have to wait to work for a body work a specific body part. So um, your back room. 
What, what does that more cater towards? Because you do have like the sled in there you can push, um, and you got some other stuff. In the back, we've got the push pull sled, the uh, battle ropes, the stationary tire flip, and uh, we've got uh, two mega racks, squat yep. racks. Uh, those are great for uh, encased, like Olympic benching, mm-hmm. squatting. Um, and I've got a Dyna body mono lift. That's great for Olympic squatting. Right. And I've got some standard leg stuff. Um, it's more for, uh, power and conditioning. Yes. Uh, it's kind of what, yeah. kind of what we call it. We got the hip glute drive back there. We got the multifunction rig, um, with the rope pulls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got mostly all of our bands back there, jump ropes. Um, uh, I mean, you've got it all. You've got something for everything that you're looking to hit. Some oh, stuff yeah. I've never even seen before. As a matter of fact, when I was there early this morning, I saw some dudes back there doing the grip, which I didn't, hadn't even seen that yet. Oh, you had not seen the forearm? No, dude, that thing yeah, looks awesome. Forearm flexion? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we got that. It's got the bands, and it's got a place you can put uh, yeah. plates on it, too. My little uh, little tiny little spaghetti forearm is going to be hitting that thing up here soon. <laughs> <laughs> I want that death grip. Well, I got that and the, the old school, uh, the old hand, school. Room, God, hand roller. Yes. We got that in there, too. Um. So I want to I want to take back a second because you were saying you got notebooks when you were a kid from drawing designs and what you wanted to do and your ideas for a gym and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What was it that inspired you to actually start working out and want to become a bodybuilder? Um, 2016. Sorry. Oh my God. 2016. Ooh. No. <laughs> sorry. When I was 16, mm-hmm. not 2016. When I was 16, I remember. Um, which is closed now, the Bilo grocery store there up Sigma Hill. Yep. I remember um, I was walking through there, and, you know, all the old grocery stores had magazine racks. Oh, yeah. And I remember seeing it was June or July edition. have Kevin Leveroni on the front. Oh, yeah. Flex magazine. And uh, I was like, man. I said, I think that's what I want to do. I said, if he can do it, I can do it. So, of course, I never made it to his level, you know. He had the uh, uh, nickname, I think, the Michigan Muscle Machine or yeah, something like that. Something it like was that. it was ridiculous. But Kevin Lavrona, he's a he's a genetic freak on another level. But when I saw that, I wanted to do that. Started working out for football, mm-hmm. but as far as bodybuilding, that's that's what got me hooked. A, a magazine cover with Kevin Lavrona. I can remember uh, working back at Joel's. I used to love reading those magazines, and I feel like that might have been. I don't know if you consider that bodybuilding's heyday, but I feel like it was very popular. 90s. It was yeah, the best. It was the best. You had LeVron and you had Chris Cremier. Even, wasn't Kai Green even coming up back then? Uh, um, mid to late 90s. Mid to late 90s. Uh, Sean Ray, mm-hmm. Flex. I mean, yep. all those guys. Dorian. Dorian. Oh, that dude the, was ridiculous. The 90s. Ronnie's. Yep. 90 and Jay was starting to come up. Yep. Uh, 90s and 2000s up till. I would say after Phil Heath. Now, Derek Lunsford now, he's very impressive. So, I was uh, going to ask you about him. I don't keep up with bodybuilding as much as I used to. I don't keep up with anything now that I have kids. But I, I did know that he won. But interestingly enough, am I right in saying that his contest weight was like 225 or 230? Uh, I'm not sure. Can't be. I, I want to say it was closer to 245, 250. Okay. But even if you look at 245, 250, and the, the I've never seen, like, his lats honestly look like mat wings. Yeah. I mean, that is something that's out of this world. Yeah. But when you look at that Mr. Olympia compared to Ronnie Coleman, there is a drastic difference. Oh, it's night and day. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody, nobody will ever top Ronnie Coleman's 2002, 2003. That, that was, like, another – shipped in from another planet <laughs> he didn't look like he was from this planet and uh you know the cool thing too <laughs> about having jay he's the only one to ever dethrone that's right dethrone the goat so and i was actually in vegas in 2006 when he did that no i actually way. got to see that yeah how that was awesome, awesome was that yeah that's pretty because cool. jay arguably should have won the year before yeah right there was a lot of controversy about oh yeah that. yeah it was pretty heated yeah and uh he uh I think he went back and kicked it into overdrive and came blazing in 06. But think about that for a second. You got 
somebody like Jay Cutler, who's arguably in the best shape of his life the year before, and then you say he kicked it into how much overdrive is there? I mean, well, these guys, you know, when you when you you got to have that laser beam focus when you and uh, but like what 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 was the lack of the laser beam before? Did he have one cheat meal like week three that just oh, no. screwed everything up? Or? No, I'm I'm sure he didn't cheat at all, but. Uh, sometimes, even if there's that 99.9 percent .9 or 999, right? There's that one millionth of percent that more you can, you can give, you can and dig it a little the harder. Difference. Yep, isn't that wild? The human sometimes, body and the mind's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about how I don't want to say freak, but just how big those physiques were, and. Do you think, because I haven't really kept up with it, but do you think bodybuilding, like for Mr. Olympia, is making a shift away from the 280-pound, 290-pound onstage like, presence, and they are going more of that smaller physique? Are they trying to get away from that? Um, not in the open. Not in the open. They're wanting them. They're starting to want them more freaky now. Okay, so they're actually going, but, like, trending back almost 15, 20 years. I feel like they are, but... They're actually, uh, and there was a time in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, where a lot of a lot of the big mass monsters couldn't control their midsection. It right. looked like it was kind of bulged out. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, Dorian and, and, and uh, yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie, at the end of Ronnie's career. Right. You know, first three quarters of his career, he was able to keep his waist pretty yes. good, but... Um, you know, there was uh there was a period where they were they were dogging the big guys. Oh yeah. And uh but now they want the freaks and now the big guys are able to control that uh control that uh that midsection a lot more so they have the massive arms, shoulders. And you legs. can see it in this year's Mr. Olympia. I mean oh, his yeah. midsection is ripped. Yeah. You know, his yeah. front double bicep pose where he's he's got that Got yeah. all sucked in, and yeah. you didn't see that, you know, fifteen yeah. years ago. Yeah, certain certain time period, it yeah, it didn't exist. Right. Um, but yeah, like uh, the big guy now, Samson Dalda, he's, you know, he's a freak, freak, and he's got a tiny, tiny waist for his his stature. Right. Um, they've got a guy over in Europe, Vito. He's he's massive, and he's got a great midsection as far as uh for a mass monster guy um there there's someone uh who just com he competed scott from from your gym yep my right training partner, and scott. what was that he competed in uh he competed in the charlotte cup that, and, that was uh johnny stewart's show okay charlotte and the division he was in was uh what's it called he was in several divisions oh, okay because it's his first show yeah and we figured you know Go in guns blazing and uh, see what we could do. Right. And, uh, you know, it didn't turn out how we had hoped or planned because you never know who you're going up against. But sure. uh, he looked great. He was oh, in uh, great shape. Uh, I, I would say he was, he got measured two weeks out. And I think he was 5.6% body fat. So by the time we cut his water and everything else, I would say he was 5% or sub 5. Um, he he looked great. It's just you, but Scott's you also know. in his fifties, right? Fifty six. He's fifty six yeah. years old and first literally time has he had ever done a show. The body of like a young mid twenty year old uh, he, guy. Yeah, he, he make can a, walk down the beach with anybody. He make a lot of twenty year olds look. Feel, he's gonna make he dumb. makes his forty three year old look like you know <laughs> fat boy. Yeah, he's, bad bod. He's in way, way better shape than I am right now. <laughs> way better. But yeah, he. I mean, he looked great. He did awesome. I was super proud of him. Uh, you know, I'm proud to call him one of my best friends on the planet, training partner, and uh, yeah, we we haven't talked about it. I don't know if he's going to do any more. It might have been a one and done. It might have lit the fire. I don't hey, know. You never know. But I mean, to get to the level of shape that he was in, and just being so guys are so dry, you know. Because mm -hmm. um, I I used to talk to Joel about training and Benny about training, mm -hmm. and um, 
Mark Finley yep. Uh, yep. about training. When I was young and growing up, I had the fortunate, in, in my eyes, the fortunate opportunity to have those guys to lean on mm-hmm. for advice and how to hit this muscle and how to do this and do that and giant set and supersets and drop sets and oh, yeah. all these other things that I don't think a lot of other people had access to. I mean, you could read the magazines or whatnot. Right. But, you know, training right there beside Mark, who at, it, before he was injured, was in great shape. Oh, I mean, yeah. some of the Beverly International stuff that he was oh, sponsored yeah. by. Get out of here. Yeah. Well, Mark's one taught me how to pose. Really? Yeah. He was a yeah. phenomenal poster. Oh, yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. And uh, I think in the 70s, he went and stayed for a length of time with Frank Zane. He did. Yeah. Him and Vinny together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lived out there with Frank Zane in California and learned how to pose. And then uh, he's the one who taught me. So, I was I was lucky with that. So, for, who, who's on your, like, Mount Rushmore of bodybuilders all time? Hmm. Well, when I was younger, I was a typical kid, Arnold course yeah. um but as as everything developed i'd say top three well i can't do that let's say top five okay uh i don't know in no real particular order you know dorian ronnie jay uh phil and uh flex wheeler phil heath mm. and flex wheeler flex wheeler had a phenomenal yeah. physique and Two, the two that I always liked that were probably the most underrated mm-hmm. bodybuilders I think ever uh, was Andreas Munzer. Don't, Don't know if him. his nineties. Uh, he was the most shredded man on the planet. Andreas Munzer. He uh, looking well. He 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 died, but yeah. uh, he uh, he he took his his condition to a level nobody's ever seen. I'm gonna have to look. <clears throat> Oh, he he was outrageous. Um, and Gary Stridham and Mike Francois, I guess I left another one out. Um, Mike Francois is probably the one that I, I strived in the 90s to look the most like. Jeez. Uh, Francois? Mike Francois, yep. He, Joel actually competed against him. Get out. Oh, he was massive. Dude, he, he looked great. He just had that look like... Uh, just raw power, yeah, and just like a Greek god when he walked. And uh, Jesus, he does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Gary Stridham's almost sixty years old, and he still looks like he's twenty five. Well, that's he's like uh, what is it, Mike O'Hearn? How yeah. old is Mike? Uh, he's in his fifties, fifty five, fifty six. That dude looks the same as he did when he was on all mm-hmm. the covers twenty twenty five oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah. Natural, of course. Yeah. 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 Of course. <laughs> Of course he is. Of course, of course he, he is. is. But speaking of speaking of stuff like that, though, um, I find it very interesting that when I started early, the first time I ever worked out, I think I was 12, 13 years old, and I had my mom, I begged her and begged her for to go buy me a weight set from Walmart, mm-hmm. and I didn't have a bench. So she just got me the dumbbell. So I did every workout that I could with a dumbbell. So she, we couldn't afford to buy me an easy curl. So at the time, I'd hold the ends of the bar, and I would just do it this way with the weights mm-hmm. in the center. Yeah. Um, but you, back then, you just did what you what you could do, what you had to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there was always this stigma about if you worked out and you, and you made any sort of gains whatsoever, it didn't matter if you were mm-hmm. 15, 18, 20, you're on steroids. <clears throat> and it was like, oh, it was like, you know, you can't even talk about it. Mm-hmm. But now with uh, hormone replacement therapy, male clinics, have you found it just – almost baffling of how acceptable it is now from, well, from where I'm, it went I, I'm baffled by a lot of the crazy stuff in the world that's acceptable <laughs> now <laughs> that's there, fair there's there's stuff that definitely doesn't help your physique that is acceptable <laughs> or your mind frame <laughs> correct <laughs> so I mean yeah yeah I mean in the 90s and 2000s, yeah, it was highly frowned upon. Mm. Um, but now, I mean, like with anything, I mean, and it is usually the younger generation that gets mm-hmm. more reckless with stuff. Sure. Um, they don't want to listen to people that's been there, done that. Right. Or somebody that just has better advice. They... 
listen to these, I mean, I have to say idiots. Right. On social media that yep. uh, really don't know their ass from a hat that just do whatever and they go, oh, this worked great, you know, and they they see these 21, 22-year-old freaks right. that have been doing, basically been doing gear since they were a teenager, like 15, 16. Right. And they've already ruined their body. They won't live to see 30. And that's and, true. And, you know, I mean, like, there there's several several big guys that have dropped out before they were 30 because they, uh, you know, pushing the envelope's okay, but you still have to be smart about it to a degree. You have right. to, you have to take the precautions you need to be as safe as you can to sure. push it as far as you can. But a lot of these guys, they're just, you know, whatever shotgunning, you know, just doing whatever. The interesting thing is, is I can understand as as being that young guy, and even today, about wanting to have a a good physique. It's so when you go to the the pool or the beach, you know your kids don't look at you and go, "You're the fat dad." Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you're you're you just don't want to be the fattest dad now. Yeah. That's yeah. I tell I tell mine, I'm like, I'm just too fat. And they're like, No, you're not. I'm like, Oh yeah, I am. Well, yeah, but, like, but you're also you're, the strongest dad. You, so that's <laughs> different. I'm like, you know, I'm in my mind, I going by back to oh when, yeah, of course. I could walk on the beach in posing trunks and have veins in my abs and stuff, and that's just not the case now. <laughs> well, it's also you can't really keep that forever in your round. No, that that no. that's not sustainable. No. Um, but these guys today who are abusing things and who are younger, you know, I wish they would just understand like what's your end goal? Is your end goal to be on stage? Uh, you know, to compete for Mister Olympia? No. Is your goal to? look the best on the beach, well then, you know, there's there's ways you can do that that are a bit more safe. And healthier. And absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I can't say anything as far as that angle because in my 20s, that's what I was, I was you know, I'm going to be on the Olympia stage one day. Well, that's just it. And, you know, uh, and I joke around about my motto now is if you want to win, it's whatever it takes. Only three words that matter. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And uh, you know, I was, I was slamming eight to ten thousand calories a day, <laughs> hard gaining in my twenties. Um, you know, there were times I couldn't even. I had to hold my breath, bend over, tie my shoe when in the off season because I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I was. I got so big so fast. Yeah. Uh, and I was carrying a lot of fat and water too, but. Um, you know, I just, I was determined. I was, I was going to get there. And uh, like with anything else, the older you get, the real, you realize that if you'd have just done this, this way, or right. just done this, this way, you could have got, actually got there a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, you know, as from 22 or 21 to, I don't know, 26, I was gaining as hard as I could. Mm-hmm. And I'd diet and compete, diet and compete. 20, around 27, 28, it's like it, it took that long to finally click that yeah. if I would gain better quality slower, right? it it would be so much easier. <laughs> so, so when I was kinda- 28, I rolled out, I gained 21 pounds of stage muscle in a year because all I did was concentrate on my nutrition and my program and my training instead of just slamming food no matter what it was, you know, eating three or 400 grams of protein, tons of junk, whatever. But wasn't that kind of the the mantra back then? It's almost like you got ripped in the spring summer whatever or whenever your season is and then it's almost like you're a bear yeah you're eating and sleeping trying to just get big you're trying to bulk up as much as you can and then you're going to chisel all that up and you know that was that was the that was the thing then Mm -hmm. and there's some that do that now still but not as many they've they've evolved come around yeah right they're working smarter not harder yeah and it's sad that in my 40s now that I could technically do that. 
you know. Well, well, also there's a thing with, you know, you've got a great base. you got muscle memory is real. But also, it's up here. Oh, yeah. You know? Well. Smart. And I was telling somebody, I think it was actually yesterday, we were talking, and uh, I'd love to compete again. Love to. Sure. I just, I don't have that killer in me anymore as far as training. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, before when I was training in my 20s, I'd have tendonitis flare up, and I wouldn't care. I'd train through it. I'd have tears streaming down my face just still training triceps. It felt like somebody was driving nails in my elbows. Didn't yep. care. I had to work out. I had to get through it. Didn't care, you know. Um, I'd get off a leg press or, um, you know, leg press 1,500 pounds for reps and stand up and have to sit back down and almost black out. Yeah. You know, it's – I don't have that anymore. I don't I don't care to do that. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't care to squat six hundred pounds for reps anymore. Right. I don't and, and and with that, like you see Ronnie Coleman who had the most probably the most genetic freak ever to step on stage, not just physique but strength. Because Ronnie oh, trained yeah. heavy. He trained hard. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, and he believed in that. Yeah, buddy. You know, <laughs> but it's like, look at him now. Ten back surgeries plus fusions. His whole spine's fused. His neck. You know, he has to use walkers. My son loves to watch the documentary The mm-hmm. King on Netflix. So we watch it a lot. And uh, but I think there's a lot to take away from that. You know, if you're going to be the king, then that's the thing you got to do. But you, you can got, also you train. Pay the price. You know, pay the price. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Well, and they've done interviews. He said he wouldn't change anything. No, and I yeah. believe him. Well, but you can never take it away, yeah. you know. Yeah. Whether, you, whether you're whether you the world champion once or eight times or a hundred, they can never take it they away. They can never take it away. If you can lay on your deathbed and say, one time I was the greatest in the world. Ever. And that, that I mean, that's something. That's That was my mentality of when I was hard competing. Right. You know, if I could get on that Olympia stage one time, just once. And how many how many are on stage at a time? Is it 15, 20? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's I'm, not a ton. No, I mean, I think I think you're right. It's around that number. 15 yeah, but think 20. about it. So you have all these people from all because the Mr. Olympia is not just limited to the U.S. It's, oh, worldwide. it's worldwide. Yeah. So, so you, let's just call it twenty of all the bodybuilders in the world. You have to be in the top twenty to even step on the stage. Yes. And if you finish 20th, you make no money. A thousand bucks, maybe? I think. Yeah. yeah. So, might cover your airfare. So, bodybuilders aren't doing this really to get rich. Because I think back in the 90s, in the heyday, Mr. Olympia won, what, $100,000 in a vehicle of some sort? I know the Arnold Classic, he would give them a Hummer. I think so. Now, back in the 90s, I want to say it was even in the 90s. Yeah, it was like a hundred thousand and like a Rolex and a Hummer. Yeah, but uh, now Mr. Olympia, you win four hundred thousand, but still, yeah. it's not a ton of money. If you think yeah. about the the time, the, the, just the food costs alone, yeah. supplements. I think uh, I don't know if they did it this year or if Arnold announced it for next year, but he upped the the grand prize money for the Arnold at half a million. Good for him. And uh, I'm sure you still probably get a diamond ring or a diamond Rolex and another vehicle, something like that. Right. Yeah. Cause I think his thing was, he used to give him a Hummer. Yeah. Yeah. You H1 know? alpha. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Ronnie, the first one Ronnie won, they had a big interview one time and they followed him around one day. He was riding in that big yellow Hummer H1 alpha with on 30 inch dubs. <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. Big bright yellow Hummer. With thirties on it. What is it with you big guys and your big trucks? Because you, you don't drive you anything small, man. You're you gotta, not driving you gotta a Miata. Coordinate. You got. <laughs> Although you getting out of a Miata would be great. Yeah, yeah. Nah, my Mustang's probably my smallest vehicle. <laughs> and can you, have you? Can you fit in it? Oh yeah, yeah. Comfortably. Fox, Fox Body's actually got pretty good room. Okay, so once you put it on, it it kind of yeah, fits. Yeah, just got to get it on. Yeah, yeah. That. that uh, yeah, so if you're wanting to train to be Mr. Olympia, you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it because that's what you want to do. Well, now you can do it for the money. Um, in the 80s and 90s, it was because it was for bragging rights. 
Oh, well, yeah, it was now, for sure. Now it is definitely for the money. You think um, so? I mean, that's. Do they get good sponsorship deals? They have to. I would presume. I mean, yeah. They don't. They it's don't pay out. They don't pay out sponsors like they used to. You know, used to Muscle Tech would kick out tons of money for sponsors, not just give you free supplements. They would give you actual cash money. Right. And then there was EAS right. and um, God, what's another? One? There I mean, was Bio like Champion Science. Nutrition, yeah. Bio Labs, and then there was a bunch of them. You know, they would actually not just supply you your supplements, but they would give you money too. Sure. I don't know that they do that anymore. I, I mean, I've not delved deep mm-hmm. enough into that part to uh, to know if mm-hmm. if they're actually really really paying. I want to say they might. Uh, with all the social media stuff, I would say, and it, this is pure speculation, but if I had to guess that, say, okay, you do X amount of podcasts or, you know, interviews, mm-hmm. whatever, and they get so many hits, you get paid so much. Okay. That, yeah. that would be my concept. I could mean, be. I, could, I could be way off. I don't know. Because I was thinking, you know, 400 grand is not a lot of money in today's, especially today, um, yeah. for, for, for that top elite athlete. When you've got guys shooting Roman candles out their butt on TikTok who are making that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, not and literally. It's but sad. Maybe. It's sad. Right. Yeah. And these that, guys are literally training to their. I don't want to say to the death, but you guys, like when you would go out on stage, you're so depleted. I mean, you're oh, borderline yeah. kidney failure. Well, I don't know. I've I've been lucky with my kidneys and liver so far. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I would get so dry, um, dehydrated, depleted. I mean, my you, you can't make spit. You can't. Can't blink. No, no. My <laughs> eyelids would literally stick to my eyeballs. I would have to open my eyes. That is I, so terrible. I would. I would uh, <laughs> that is so unhealthy. And yeah, yeah, it's not. I mean, could you even good. take a dump? No, no. there's no dumping because no. you got to have water to yeah. dump. Yeah, yeah. There was there was nothing. There was no fluid. God. Um, there was one. Uh, I was telling somebody about it yesterday. There's one particular show I competed in, and I destroyed them. I mean, I that's one of the overalls I won, and. Um, uh, I was so dry. I was, I felt like I was overheating from the inside out. Oh. I literally felt like I was cooking. Oh, and so I couldn't cooking. sweat. And luckily it was like 39 degrees outside. It was in the winter. And uh, I was like, screw this. So I took my, my sandals off and I go outside and stand on the cold asphalt and open my jacket up cool down stand up there <laughs> naked and being like oh god almost <laughs> <laughs> it was it was yeah it was bad it was that one that one's the only one i just i didn't understand so um, can, for those of uh who are listening who've never don't even understand what we talk about with water cutting yeah. could you kind of explain not maybe not necessarily your routine but just what what the bodybuilder has to do as they're leading up to competition and cutting water um me personally, I I never cut sodium. Um, people ask why. Uh, my experience, and this is what worked for me, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, sodium is what keeps the muscles full. Right. Uh, if you don't have sodium in, they're going to go completely flat. You won't be able to get a pump when you need to. And you want to retain as much water in the muscle as you can. Mm-hmm. So I would technically um i would load and deplete so i would like six days out i would take in an extreme amount of water like four gallons sometimes five gallons a day jesus i mean i, I don't know what how what water toxicity what the level is but damn i feel like you're getting hard, close it's hard it's hard to get that in yes. but, <laughs> but uh for like two days i would uh i would do like four or five gallons and then i would cut like one gallon or a half a gallon a day up until, so say, for an example, like Sunday, Monday, I would do like four gallons. Okay. Tuesday, I'd do three. Uh, Wednesday, I'd do two and a half. Thursday, I'd do 
like one and a half. Okay. And then Friday I do like 12 ounces. That's it. Yeah. So it's like loading and then flushing your the the water out and of you your body. And you just got to be constantly just pee and pee and pee until you, there's no more pee. Just about, yeah. Yeah. And you, it's and that's what worked for me. You know, a lot of people say it's too extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is hard on the body because it is flushing in your bladder, your kidneys, dry. Um, but I mean, I actually felt great doing that. Of course, up until I dried out. When I dried out, I felt like I was just like, you know, <laughs> you just have no energy. You know, right. you have no fluid. It's not that you feel bad. You're just so drained. You're just so tired. You know, even you, as you bring your water down, you increase your carbs and your 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 calories to help fill the muscles. Because you're still eating. Oh yeah, yeah. So how the hell are you swallowing? You just <sighs> dry or. <sighs> Or, you know, you get like an ounce after you get done eating just to wash shuttle, it down. Shuttle, wash it down and shuttle the carbs into your muscles. Yeah. This is crazy. That's wild. Yeah. And, you know, so it, that may be completely way off for some people. But right, but it worked for you. It worked. When I when I look my best, that's when I work. That was what worked for you me. You know, in the, uh, there was a documentary. Was it the Ronnie Coleman documentary? But there's an interview with Kevin LeBron mm-hmm. when he was actually outperforming Ronnie. Mm-hmm. And it was a Mr. Olympia. It might have been the year that he won his first one, maybe. Mm-hmm. But Ronnie went into Kevin's room and asked him, how was he so shredded? And there was a bottle of vodka sitting there. <laughs> and he goes, Ronnie was so... Have you ever seen this? I haven't seen that. Oh, no, God, you huh? need to watch it. He was like, Ronnie was so uptight. Like, he was so meticulous on everything and weighing his food and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, Ronnie, you need to just loosen up, man. You know, he went out there in the pre-pose, I guess, did not do well. Yeah. He was like, take your shot of that vodka. And he's like, no, nah, man, I can't do that, you know, in, in the Ronnie voice. So he, but he finally talked him into it and he took a shot and he loosened up. And I guess he maybe had two, three, four more later or whatever. <laughs> and then the next day during, I think it was the Olympia. Yeah. When he won, he was like, he was so full, but vascular. Something oh, about yeah. the alcohol. It thins your blood. And it, so it lets it pump to the. Yeah. Yeah. The and that was, that was, Kevin said that was the secret that got Ronnie his first, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Olympia or something. Oh yeah. Through the nineties, LeBron was, he was just amazing. But who uh, knew, like a couple shots of vodka the night before. Oh, that's I a, mean, that's an old school trick. Really? Yeah. Wine or, uh. Some some of the old school seventies eighties. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Bodybuilders, they'd drink a couple glasses of wine or something. I should be ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here right now, I should be in a man thong ripped. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it would be. I mean, here, you know, you have any special? I would, well, I'm telling you, if, I need I need all the help I can I get right now. If I look that way, I would I would you'd probably have to tell me to put on more clothes to work out. <laughs> You can't wear that in here. Oh, God. Oh, it'd be the best. <laughs> Let that happen just one time. I know, right? Well, you were that way. I mean, <clears throat> if you look at the, the magazine cover that you have, uh, pl- I'm going to call it placard, but that's not the real word, up above uh, one of your doors there. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a phenomenal shape you were in. That was actually two days after the Mr. USA. After? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually looked better then. Uh, I had been dieting. That particular year, that show, it was a rough year. I dieted like 22, 24 weeks total to get to the USA's in Vegas. And by the time I got out there, I was so depleted. Yeah. I was flat. Couldn't couldn't get a pump. Couldn't carve up good. Didn't matter what I ate. And uh, I got waxed. I didn't make top 15 there. Isn't it amazing? Like, here you talk 22, 24 weeks. We're talking about water. We're talking about sodium. Obviously, you got to think about your potassium, too, because you don't want to bleed too much because you need potassium so your heart doesn't stop. Yeah. And but there's so much science to it. It's not just these guys who are going out there and you know, pick things up and put them down. <laughs> you know, it's not that. Yeah. There's an actual science to what you guys do. There is. There you know? Is. But you don't want to be like some of these new age trainers that try and make it too scientific. Sure. Suit, but too scientific. Right. Like uh, micros, macros. No, you idiot. It's <laughs> vitamins and food. Quit giving it stupid new names to make you try and sound smarter, you know. Um, and they and they do that to make your your average everyday person feel stupid like sure they they don't understand or they need to learn 
this whole new click of terminology yep to be able to work out correctly and that that irks me so bad there is um, a uh there's a youtube channel that i like to watch cannot i'm looking it up now so i can tell you the guy's name he's a doctor he's a sports science doctor he's also a bodybuilder where is he uh it's called the renaissance Here. I can't even pronounce that. I'll send it to you. This guy's his name's Dr. Mike or whatever, and he goes over like these Hollywood workouts, mm-hmm. and he tears them to pieces. Mm-hmm. He says some of the funniest things. Uh, like he'll critique Dave Batista. He just did this other stuff, and then he'll start going, oh, here we go to this Hollywood jargon bullshit again. <laughs> you know, He does say a lot of homoerotic yeah. things, which I'm not mm-hmm. sure if that's who he is or if he's just <laughs> being funny but, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. you know uh was it chris helms or, mm, i'd like to see him pump me up oh whatever. god yeah if you can get past that mm. but there is a lot of the hollywood fluff the macros <clears throat> the micros and this and that and um you know he's one of these yeah. guys that he he talks shit about the rope you know and yeah. doing stuff like that or jake gyllenhaal was carrying a heavy dumbbell bat or not dumbbell, but a punch bag on his shoulder and rotating he's like what are we doing here yeah (laughs) you know yeah he could do all these other things that would help him there's 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 just so much and so many angles that these social media gurus are making tons of money on i think it was somebody made the comment one time maybe it was mark Wahlberg, but i don't think he listened to his advice Someone was talking to him about working out. He's like, if you don't look better than I do with your shirt off, I'm not listening to you. Yeah. yeah. But then if you look at his trainers, they definitely don't look better than he does with their shirt off. Right. So why are you listening? Yeah. Well, and I mean, I told somebody the other day we were talking, I was like, pretty much any aspect in life, um, if somebody can't do what they're telling you to do or do it better by example, or if they've not done it, Right. Shouldn't listen to them. (laughs) Somebody has a failed marriage. You shouldn't take relationship advice from them. You know, somebody, you know, somebody that has seven failed businesses. Yeah. Now you should listen to them what not to do. Exactly. (laughs) Not what to do. Yeah. I mean, it's just. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Just some common sense. Yeah. Just think about it. that's so sad about the the social media stuff. Sure, you can't pick apart the BS from facts. And then people that have been there have done that, and they want to tell people just the straight up truth. They're like, "Oh, that's bullshit." That's bull- right. I'm like, okay, well, you going down that road and see where it ends up. You know? True. Yeah. Well, you know, if if people will listen to the people who've been it, done it. Uh, you know, got the T-shirt like yourself, and try to prevent people from making those same mistakes. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot. I get a lot of, I think, better information or better direction for listening to people about what not to do. Yeah. As opposed to what to do. Because what you did might not work for me. Exactly. But I want to know what you did when you screwed up. Yeah. Because I don't want to do that. I don't want to make that mistake. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot to that. Plus, with AI, I don't know how AI is going to take over. Excuse me, the bodybuilding world. But like everything else, I'm sure it's going to have its place. They're, They're already ruining it. They're they're using. They're already ruining it. I'm serious. I've I've seen they'll somebody will like do a video, and they'll throw the AI thing on there, and of course they look like Mister or Miss Olympia walking down the street. I'm like, what the shit, really? I'm like, come on, man. I'm like, you need to pull about sixty pounds of muscle off of that video, right? And show what you really look like. But yeah, it's it's already getting. Out of hand. So one one thing I can remember growing up in my early twenties and going to the gym, and and, it, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's flip flop now. Like your guys who are in the best shape at the gym, mm-hmm. they never let you see it. They mm-hmm. always covered up. They're wearing hoodies or they're wearing sweats or long sleeves. Yep. Very rarely would they ever let you get a peek. You know, unless you had somebody who was training for a show or whatnot, that might be in their tank top or whatnot. Right. But those guys who are like under the radar, man. But now, anybody with a camera who's doing a push up is now on the Instagram taking selfies. And I'm not sure what you're taking pictures yeah, of. Yeah. Your skeletal system, I, it, it's just like there is There's, no shame anymore. Well, because now, if, if you have your opinion, you're judging somebody. 
you know, they're doing great. Well, they're doing this. We're doing, well, that's great, but, and, and you know, it's awesome that if somebody wants to say they lose 100 pounds. That's great. That's great. awesome. They, they're more healthy. They're in better shape. They feel better. They look better. But that doesn't necessarily mean you need to be wearing the skimpiest outfit you can. You know, <laughs> I mean, even when I was in great shape, I tell guys when they come to my gym, I was like, you know, we don't train here without shirts. Right. And uh, like, really? Even outside? I'm like, nope, not outside. And I just tell them, like, when you can win more than 12 first place super heavy trophies, then you can train with your shirt off. Because I never did. Never trained with my shirt off. Um, only time I ever took my shirt off is when I was prepping for a show. I was contest mm-hmm. prep posing. Right. I was practicing my posing. Sure. Now, with social media, everybody's practicing their posing, <laughs> you know, for no reason. At the gym, <clears throat> during yeah, the workout. Yeah, yeah, at, yeah, they're practicing their posing, you know, for whatever they're doing, you know, that their their Instagram likes, I guess. Times change, man. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, and, it, and it's about respect, too. I mean, I mean, if people, if someone is prepping for a, a type of a contest and people know that they understand that but if mm-hmm. somebody's just peeling their shirt off just trying to basically show off right for no reason i don't, I don't see the point in it i mean you need you need to respect other people in their space i mean they're like i don't want to look at that crap you know well the other thing i never thought we'd ever have to deal with in a gym and i haven't it's not interfere with me because I go at different times where that that's not an issue, but people setting up their camera recording themselves mm-hmm. while they work out, yeah, and talking about their workout. I guess mm-hmm. they have a channel or whatnot, so they're yeah. So, is that something you've run into at the gym? Uh, I've had a few guys, uh, a couple girls, set yeah. up their cameras and film their their exercises. And I've had a lot of them ask me, like, is that okay? I said, it's fine. I said, as long as it don't interfere with somebody else. Right. You know, you might be the star in your video, but you're not the star here, you know? Um, Like that. But, uh, and I I hate to, but I will happily hurt somebody's feelings if if they feel like they're entitled that someone else interfered their video. Like no, 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 no. Uh, uh-uh. their workout comes before your little social media experiment. Right. So, mostly everybody has asked if it was okay to film in there, and I tell them, you know, it's fine, no problem, as long as it doesn't interfere with somebody else. If somebody gets in your video, you better not have a problem with it. Right. I mean, it's um, a gym. It's just interesting. So, it's something you would never think that you'd ever have to deal with, or even would be a thing. Yeah. It. Like you said, times have changed. Times are changing. And some things not necessarily for the better. But This was a pre-pandemic. I went out to California. I had to go work at a hospital out there. And um, I rented a car. There was one thing that I wanted. Well, actually, take that back. There were two things I wanted to see while I was there. Number one, I wanted to go down to the Sunset Strip. And I wanted to walk as much of it as I could. I wanted to go to the Whiskey, the Rainbow, um, the old tower records. And I wanted to see everything. Cause my favorite genre of music is eighties metal. Mm-hmm. And if you want to call it hair metal, you can, if you want to call it glam rock, you can, <clears throat> but I'm a diehard to the bone guns and roses, Motley Crue fan, top two band, favorite bands of all time. Yep. Hence the name of the show. Appetite for discussion. So I wanted to go do it. Don't forget poison. Def Leppard. Well, white, white snake, white lion. Come I'll keep on, going. Now. Yeah, keep going. Rat, all of them. Yes, <laughs> on the on down the line. Fast push cat, all that good stuff. Kiss. Come on. Now, see, I was never a big kid. They were more in the seventies, but I like some of their songs. Yeah. Uh, Aerosmith, huge fan. Um, such a great time for music. Music today just stinks. Mm-hmm. There's nineties no, was the last decade of good music. I think. I like the even alternative. even with the R and B and the alternative. That was the last decade of any type of good so music. when you're working out i don't ever see you with headphones Mm-mm. so you don't work out to music i 
think I play pretty good music to Jim. So <laughs> this is true. I, I listen. I listen to that. I will say you do. But if you were going to train to music, your own music, what are you going to listen to? Um, usually that. Usually a lot of '80s rock. Um, I listen to some some '90s rap. Mm-hmm. Um, this new crap they call rap is not rap. It's not rap. Um, but '80s, '90s rock, hard rock. Some rap in the 90s, yeah. 80s. But this newer stuff, there's very, very little. Right. Very little. There's very little of the newer stuff that I listen to anyway. Um, but the second place I wanted to go was Gold's Gym, Venice yeah. Beach. You know, I felt like I needed to go see the two the two holy grails. And, you know, I got to go see my hair metal, Sunset mm-hmm. Strip, where all the debauchery and these people came up from the streets and, you know, and made it. And then where... The other side. So this is where you're going to go kill your body, drugs and alcohol, sex, drugs and rock and roll. Yeah. And then I wanted to go see, yeah. you know, where you're making your body better. <laughs> Build a temple over here. We're going to tear it down. That's exactly yeah. right. I want to, I want to see the the growth and then the demise because um, I love them both equally the same. Yeah. Um, not personally demising my own body, but uh, I just wanted to go. I wanted to go walk and touch the bars and walk on the same floor that Arnold was at yeah. and Zane was at and all the greats before who paved the way that got me into fitness and Robbie and Robinson working at, all, Lee Priest oh, I about to mention Lee earlier you know because he's more my size um, <laughs> 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 so uh, that guy was a freak he's awesome um, I'd love to meet I've met him I have met him we want to talk um, about forearms that dude's forearms were crazy oh yeah yeah I have met Lee I'd I'd love to sit down and BS with him one day because he 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 pulls no punches. Yeah, he's no he's filter. cool as they come, and he he has covered himself in a lot of ink yeah. over the over the years. Yeah, um, but I think he's went through some stuff, but he's come out the other side. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? He's he's still awesome. But those are those are the two things I wanted to do, so I accomplished those things. So if I never go back to California, which is okay with me, by the way, um, I did the two things I wanted to do. Um, so, what's something unique about yourself or like a hidden talent that no one knows about? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty well out there. I mean, I'm, you, there's got to be some hidden talent. Like you're a great singer. You're an incredible dancer. No. Oh, come on. Now in the '90s, I could I could throw down <laughs> dancing. That was a hundred pounds less. I I could get down pretty good, but I don't know. No. No. I don't know. Can't bring the wife on here. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a separate talent. <laughs> that's a separate talent. Right. That's my lie. I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> you I want. can tell as big as you want. <laughs> um, let's see. But like I had one lady on there. She's a dentist. She does a lot of forensic dentistry. Apparently, she's a very good singer. No one, no. If you knew her, you wouldn't. Unless you know her personally, you yeah. wouldn't know that she's a great singer. Like, do you embroider? I can, but I don't. I'm not. No, I'm you're not, not great an artist. At it. You don't paint, draw. Not a, I'm, I can draw okay, but I'm not yeah. great. Um, Mechanic. I have no, I know enough to tear it up. I don't know how well I can fix it back. Put it back together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'm excellent demolitionist. So <laughs> me too. Yeah. I can tear so, some shit up. Yeah. I'm I'm excellent at that. I mean, I'm pretty much what you see is what you get. I mean, uh, there's there's a couple things. Uh, obviously, I I didn't go pro. Hmm. Um. I beat a lot of guys that did go pro, um, and I feel like if I'd have had a proper sponsor, mm-hmm. knowing the right people wasn't from out here in the middle of nowhere, I could have maybe had a little better shot. Right. I don't know. Um, but several things I want to say as far as business, um, you know, I've been in the family business since I was 12. And what is your family? My family business. My family business. We had gas stations, convenience stores. Okay. Uh, my dad, he was probably one of the best auctioneers on the East Coast back in the day when he did it. Um, he is a horse trader. He buys really? sale. If, if he could, he could figure five things over here that this guy needed or wanted, and knew somebody that had it, and he could work the trade in between. He was a middleman, and then got paid and on make that. money, and he. He was he was a businessman's businessman. That's there, awesome. There's 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 people all over the world knew my dad as far as trading. Really? And yeah. 
Yeah, he he was a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> through and through. They they don't cut them like that anymore. But uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I worked with my mom in in our stores since I was twelve. Mm-hmm. And uh, these kids now whine about working. They have no idea. You ever tried to wet mop plywood? Uh, no, but yeah. just it sounds yeah difficult. So, <laughs> that's what I got to do. <laughs> you get to wet mop <laughs> every up. night. Why plywood? Was that the floors that was of the, the floor. store? That was the floor. Get out. The old school store. The, oh. old, the old log cabin, yeah. Was plywood, and you had to wet mop it. Yeah, and then unfinished concrete. You had to wet mop that, too. Yeah. Sounds very tacky, yeah. gritty. There's yeah. a lot of grip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's working the shoulders before I even That's know That's right. It. Yeah, so. Great workout. Um, and then I uh, took that over. So mom and dad taught me a lot as far as little tricks of the trade as far as business. Yep. And then I absorbed, tried to absorb everything I read and heard and talked to people throughout the years in fitness and bodybuilding. And uh, when it comes to certain things, I, I don't know everything. I'm, I've never claimed to know everything about anything, but there's a few things. Uh, ebonically, I know my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know my shit. <laughs> So, Just a few things. So if you if you were not a gym owner and you weren't a bodybuilder, what do you think you would have done? Pro football. Really? I was pretty decent. Yeah? I so was pretty would, good. You think you would have, like if you could do a redo, not that that's what you wanted to do, but let's say you went down that path. You think you had a shot to go play college and potentially in the in I would the have retired before I was 30, a millionaire. Oh. Football. And what position did you play? Uh, at the time in high school, I played O line, but okay. I would I would have wanted to play uh, linebacker in college. Okay, because you're what six two three six two six yeah. two, and at the time when you graduated high school, how how much was, did you weigh? I was on like two ten. Two ten. That's still a good size though. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. I was pretty decent. I basically did. You have any offers at all when you were in college, high school? Pissed away like six for free rides. <laughs> yeah it's talk still, about being young and dumb so and, the, the thing is though i like the way you answered it you said you pissed away yeah which lets me know there's still something back there that gnaws or eats oh yeah, bit, yeah you know if, if, of what could i i told a guy the other day i said if your mom ever tells you or gives you advice listen if if she's got her head on straight if you know obviously there's some moms sure. out there that aren't the best but <clears throat> people if they have have steady parents listen to your mama <laughs> because i had a free ride to duke i had a free ride to uh elon davidson uh western east carolina um play football and because none of them were florida state i was an idiot i was like, i'm not going to any of them if i can't go to florida state you know I'm i want to play for Bobby bowden this was 90s yeah oh yeah and mom's like, well, you know, you could go to those and it's, it's there. She said, and then you could transfer. I was like, screw that. I was like, I'm, if I can't get in, I'm not going. So you have been a little bullheaded your entire life. <laughs> Just tad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to all these places, division one and, and high level two for free. Yeah. There's only one or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Young and dumb. I'm telling you. So. If I would have listened to my mom, I very likely could have got there. And and the crazy <clears throat> thing is, is you could have done that and still trained and maybe even drifted to bodybuilding or done whatever later. You yeah. know, I mean, if you want to see, yeah. I mean, that's how, um, that's how uh, John Cena, John Cena yeah. went to college and played football division three. Yeah. You know. And he was bodybuilding at the time. Great physique. Yep. And the coach told him either you're going to play football or you're going to bodybuild. So mm-hmm. John said, all right, well, I guess I'm bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, and he started his amateur bodybuilding career, which then grew into professional wrestling. wrestling. Did you ever have any wrestling opportunities or did you do any wrestling? My, uh, like I said, my dad knows people all over the world. And uh, you probably know Nikita Koloff yeah. mm-hmm. is not Russian. No. <laughs> He's no. a good old country boy. Yeah, he was coaching West <clears throat> Wilkes Central's wrestling team for a little he while. He lives, uh, 
I think up in Hamptonville. Okay. Actually lives there. Well, he'll be in Statesville yeah. the weekend after Jay Cutler's here because there's a fantastic wrestling event with uh, AMW, AWM, sorry, yep. that uh, Neil Johnson Swimming Pool are helping put on. That's and Nikita awesome. will be there, and the former Dolph Ziggler, can't remember his new name, is going to be there. And I think Arn Anderson's going to be there. That's awesome. That's yes. cool. And it's helping support Purple Heart Homes. Well, uh, my dad and Nikita were... Right. They were actually pretty good friends, and uh, he had bought horse trailers from my dad for years, you know, and uh, he came into my store one day, he's like, you're a pretty big guy. He's like, you ever thought about professional wrestling? I was like, I don't know. He was like, uh, he's like, I think I could get you in there pretty easy. He said, if you ever want to do that, he said, you just give me a call. He gave me his card. I still got his card in my wallet, I think. That was like 20 years ago. And just never did it. Never did no. it. Who knows? You know, if you think about it, and I have, I have a well, I'm not say really friends. I mean, I know Adam, Adam Shear, yeah, uh, Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, I'm good friends with uh, Adam Waddell on Silverback. Yes, him, he, and Adam Shear, they're like best friends. They're great friends, and uh, you know, I've I've met Adam Shear a couple times. Yeah, oh, yeah, spoken at bodybuilding shows and stuff. We've not ever hung out or anything like that but he graduated uh, he's a big guy high school with my brother-in-law they're in the same class yeah that from bandies yeah and uh he said adam you know it was destined to be a wwe wrestler even from way back when oh yeah and, oh yeah i said he's a great guy but he just had the personality that fits yeah that and what he's doing mm -hmm. um god there's a guy i'd love to interview um but i think i missed my window he's like super famous now so yeah, I mean, he's pretty easy to talk to when you talk to him. Oh yeah. Oh, and also a lady that I worked with in the emergency department, um, Nadine. Her son Phil is one of I don't know best friends, but very very good friends. Travels out to go see um, Adam, mm -hmm. um, and Phil's Phil and his dad own a sports memorabilia company where they buy and sell and go get autographs. Like they were just at John Travolta's getting a bunch of stuff signed at his house like oh, wow. three weeks ago. Um, so stuff like that. But yeah, I've always heard great things about, about Adam. But I was going to say, it's interesting just in this area, the ties to professional wrestling and the mm -hmm. people around who've had the opportunity. You know, Joel had his little opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Then he did some stuff with WWF at the time, but he yep. get, he tore his shoulder up and uh, it didn't pan out for him. I think he had a nice opportunity at one point. Um, but it's just interesting, the things around our area that yeah. could have or there, there were some, some opportunities there. Yeah. I like to play college football at Duke and <laughs> said no. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know, one of your dumber choices I made. <laughs> but, but Adam, but Adam was also a, uh, he won the strongman, the Arnold Classic. I think so. I know he won North Carolina strongman and qualified for world's strongest man at mm -hmm. one time. Or maybe he won the world's strongest. He either won the Arnold Classic or he won the world's strongest man. One never, of them. He never won world's. That he, dude can I think you, crumble a frying pan with his hands. Yeah. Yeah. He's that is pretty strong. <laughs> but even with his strength in, yeah. in wrestling, you can see that the training and stuff has taken a toll on his body with the back oh, surgeries and yeah. he's popped, yeah. I think, both both tricep or elbow. He crushed an elbow. Um Yeah. But you can see yeah, the pounding that it takes on the body. Yeah. I mean they can say wrestling's fake all they want, but even even doing stuff was it 200 days out of the year uh that's probably I mean, on this on the on the yeah. low end some of these yeah. guys who aren't you know the rock and and yeah. these other they they're get, 300 days a year yeah. yeah i mean that that flipping and rolling and you know taking that, chairs to the back yeah. and falling off the top rope and yeah, all that, that sort stuff of stuff takes its toll yeah i mean okay mm. so the ending has been predetermined Okay, but you still have to sell it. Yeah. Okay? I mean, you can call it a man soap opera. You can call it whatever you yeah. want. But those guys are athletes. They take a beating. Yeah. And not all of them are making the millions of dollars yeah. a year. And being on the road. God. I mean, you know, away from your family. You got to, you may be in one city one night and have to be a thousand miles away the next night. Right. You jump, go finish up, go jump straight on a plane. and Or you got to rent a car because you can't afford the plane ticket. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you, if you watch a lot of the wrestling documentaries, and I have, like, Dark Side of the Ring and stuff like that, you really do get a better uh, understanding and respect 
um, for what those guys do. You know, yeah. like these guys yeah. coming to West Idol, you know, um, God, I can't remember his name, but he wrestled in the WWE for quite a long time, and he had a very good name, and I knew him also from Total Divas because he used to date Nikki Bella then when um, she was dating John Cena. Um, Chad? No, I, I don't. I can tell you what his name is here in oh. a second, but he used to go by Dolph Ziggler. He's oh, also oh. a comedian. I got you. Um, and does some stuff like that. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of wrestlers come in and pl- in, uh, at the gym. Uh, which, you know, Chad's local. He was Gunner. Yes. Chad's come. Right. He's trained. Uh, I think he trained. he's trained a couple other gyms around, but he's trained there at Genesis once. Uh, A.C. Austin, he's an uh, he's, um, amateur or semi-pro wrestler. Yeah. He's been a couple times worked out. Nick he, Nemeth is his name. New ah, name. okay. Okay. So, yeah, he, I think I showed you a picture of him. Uh, but, yeah, how crazy is that, that Gunner? Mm-hmm. Is now a sheriff, but w- you know, was a, a big name for a little while there in, in oh, the yeah. WWE. Yeah, he uh, he he's had a jacked. long run. Yeah, yeah, he's in great shape. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched him on the cardio. He did like thirty minutes on the art trainer. And he jumps over on the lift and does thirty minutes. I was like, mm. my <laughs> heart was done. Jumped out and run around the gym a couple of times. No, no, and I I don't mean he was slow paced either. No, Just like he was. He's a big old running. dude. Yeah. Sir, do you know you're speeding? Yep, give me the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Hands are on the wheel. Yes, sir, yeah. whatever you say. Yeah, it'd be, be like when Ronnie was, was a... Can you cop. imagine that big old joke? Can you imagine rolling up on your house? No. Serve a warrant. No, I didn't do it, but I'll go anyway. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm just going to get in your car myself. I'll put myself in the back seat, sir. And we'll, we'll settle this at the station. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. When there's I plenty to hold you back. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine that big old rascal showing up? I mean, they had to give him custom uniforms. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. so big. Yeah. I mean. It's like, I think it's like 5X. Yeah. Yeah. Monster. Yeah, I have no doubt. No. Mm-mm. No. Not doing but, that. I mean, I was obviously never that big. But, I mean, I've, when uh, I did it several years, when I used to bounce at a club, I had mm-hmm. to wear a three-piece suit. I had to get it custom made, but well, those aren't cheap. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, especially when you're your size and their size at the time, you have to get things custom made, oh, yeah. tailor made. Yeah, you know, so you have to spend a crap ton of money on your clothes. Yeah, I've never had that problem. Well, but you probably got a lot more money than than I do left over not having to spend it on clothes. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, they they charge extra when you hit three and four X. It sucks. It's not that is fair. true. That is true because when I'm ordering my shirts for my business, the price definitely goes up after the double X. <laughs> that is true. Um, so is there if you were training, what's your favorite exercise? Like you love doing blank, like when you're training. I don't know if there's even one particular exercise. Um. I'd say chest or back as really? far as body part. Okay. Um, quads, I mean, those were my three major big body parts that stood out when I was mm-hmm. competing. Um, there was very few that could beat me when we compared legs or back. I'd, I'd, I'd been I'd been beaten before, but there was very few that could when I was in top form. But you, but you're tall, so that kind of is a disadvantage for you, right? Uh, yeah, no. Okay. Uh, if you're tall and you can get your legs big, it literally just makes everybody look ridiculously childish. Right. Yeah. I mean, because the shorter guys, everybody says you, they don't have to work as hard, and I guess technically they don't. But I mean, they still got to put in the work. Yeah, you still got to put in the that, work. Get that muscle to grow yeah my buddy just give me shit because i can bench more than them was like well your arms are short and i was like well i still got to press it (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know i mean yeah for sure yeah so um i don't know i used to love bent over bar rows going back don't know why i used to love it though because i used to be strong yeah Yeah, i mean i could i could legit strict bent over bar row 495 for six reps and I was, I was, uh, I mean, they weren't ugly. They weren't slinging them. Yeah. They weren't jerking them. I mean, they were, they were legit reps. How is and, your lower back today? Uh, it's still good. 
Really? Oh, it used oh, to be bulletproof. Oh, my back used to be bulletproof. Now I'll get a catch in my back now, like if I sleep wrong, but mm -hmm. and I have to pop my back every day or two. But as far as any back issues, you know, yeah. knock on wood, nothing so far. So have um, you had any major issues from training? Only major injury I've had is uh, I popped my tricep tendon uh, one time. Um, I've had a lot of uh, like superficial tears, mm -hmm. like the muscles separate. But yeah, uh, as far as completely rip in half or completely tear loose, that's the only one ever. That's uh, actually so I've, pretty. I've been, I've no been very lucky. That's the only surgery. Oh uh, yeah, it, but yeah. No, no rotator cuffs, mm -hmm. no knees. Man, you're very lucky. I, no, I've had I have had my knees worked on. Okay, uh, I tore my MCL on my left knee playing football in high school. Okay, but that, that wasn't bodybuilding related. No, and you then, know a lot of these guys we know that trained who've never competed for anything, and they've yeah. popped their triceps, they've had shoulders. their shoulders scoped, mm -hmm. they've done some stuff to their knees. Yep, you know that's wild. Yeah, I've been lucky. You've been lucky. Yeah, and I mean there was times where we were moving big numbers, like um, like we were talking about. Some athletes, uh, one of my former training partners, he was a pro football player. Yeah. And uh, he's massive. That was when I was at my strongest. Um, but he was stronger than me, so he pushed me to be stronger. Mm -hmm. um, like, I we, we just decided to do the little combine thing one day, and he's like, let's see what we can do with 225. I've done it 42 times. he done it 63 that's unheard of. He's, but he, you know, he's now he's bodybuilder. He wasn't right. in college and doing oh, the combine right, right, stuff. Right. But I, I mean, that's how strong he was. I mean, he could do, he got like a 90 pound dumbbell and do tricep extensions, one arm. I mean, he is ridiculously strong. Um, we'd do front squats, 465 pounds for like six, eight reps. Um, I was I mean, never we, a front squat fan. We we used to move some big number stuff, and they, they, none of it was ugly. We would we would get it done, and it actually looked legit. So uh, I just don't see people. Do you think people still train like that anymore? No, no. I, I don't see people training. I don't like even that have anymore. to hesitate to answer that. No, they don't have. It's it's even less of a percentage now than it was fifteen years ago. They they don't have that killer instinct right. in them. They don't have that animal to let out. And if they do, it's they're screaming, yelling, sounding stupid. Don't they're you think not, that's overdone? It is um, unless you're unless you can le legitimize it by. You know, making right. people be like, oh, my God. Right. You know, the amount He's of got weight. eight plates on each side <clears throat> or whatever. Yeah, deadlifting and stuff like <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, like, you know, my old one of my old training partners, Mark, you know, he he passed away. Mark, uh, what was his last Tucker. name? Tucker. Tuck. Mark Tucker passed away? Oh, my God, yeah. Um, eight years ago. No, what happened? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. He had a good Cancer. physique. Oh, Cancer. man. Yeah. Cause he trained, he competed in a few shows, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cause he, he trained at Joel's for a while. Oh yeah. We trained together off and on for like God, 15 years. Mark Tucker. And, he was uh, left-handed. Random. I and know, uh, but... we uh, had most ridiculous quads. Um, hack squats. I could never keep up with him. He'd put like seven plates on each side, hack squats and just rep it. I said, geez, man, how does your knees not explode? Yeah. <clears throat> never phased him now squats he couldn't do as much in squats or leg press but hack squats he'd blow me out of the water damn that's wild but um yeah yeah i mean me and mark trained together up until he moved uh moved away to texas and then california and uh he developed cancer when he lived in california passed damn. away you remember what type of cancer pancreatic i believe hmm. yeah uh, that's you don't catch that early it's going to get you yeah but um you know we would we would randomly go to different gyms like every week we would pick a different gym to go to somewhere like we'd drive to charlotte we'd drive down mike keevers in denver just one day i mean 
we were both single. I mean, right. we didn't have anybody to answer to. We just we jump in the car and be like, "Hey, where you want to train?" Oh, I don't care. You know, we go to Winston, wherever. You know, something different, something to see. And uh, you know, we'd go to Golds down in Lake Norman, and yeah, we'd be loading up the leg press like. 23 plates on the leg press and people are like they just stand back and just shake their head and we used to move some big numbers too um but uh but yeah of all your travels where is the best hole in the wall gym you've ever been like a hidden gym like a little hidden secret Oddly, it is really odd. Probably Kiever's down in Denver. Really, it it's just a little, little old school rock and roll gym. You know, yeah. Kiever's one of the old school dogs. He's he's done it for years, like Joel seventies, eighties. Yep. But uh, yeah, yeah. He's one of the old cool guys. Kiever's. Okay. Yep. Iron physique. And That's Denver. what it's called, iron physique. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wait a minute. I think Adam trains there when he's He does. Gym. He yeah. does some. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've trained, um, yeah, I've trained Jim all over the world. I just, most of them I went to other places were more, you know, big gyms, big right. gyms, like Gold's out in San Diego, um, um goals up in maryland new york um stuff like anytime fitness in like iowa indiana arkansas michigan stuff like that um florida there was i don't even remember the name um several gyms in florida i've trained at yeah uh trained several in texas uh, Louisiana. I mean, I've I've trained all over. All over, over yeah, over that's what I was asking. Like twenty five years. Hole in the wall, what would it be? So okay, probably the the smallest little un commercial gym would probably be Iron Physique. Cool. Yeah, and it's fairly local. Yeah, yeah. So now, if you had, if there was a young bodybuilder coming up, what's the one piece of advice you would give them? The one piece. Don't listen to these idiots on social media. <laughs> Even though this is a podcast, and this is going to be on social yeah. media. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Listen to I guess, this idiot the one time. Right. Well, I guess, <laughs> is YouTube social? Yeah, I guess it is. But, uh, yeah, the these, uh, these guys that, these so-called bodybuilding gurus that are just coming out of the woodwork, or these guys that have... Even some of them that's been around a while that have literally totally changed their so-called view mm -hmm. on bodybuilding, don't listen to those idiots because they've not just changed their view on bodybuilding because of certain either health issues or whatever. They've only changed their view to make money. That's it. There you go. To get views. You Correct. Know. Um, my view's never changed. I mean, if you want to hold it pedal to the metal all i'm all for it too but just need to be smarter about it right um some of these guys out here these younger guys they're you know gear to the walls yep and they have even if they have a clue they're just too stupid <laughs> they're they're, <laughs> too stupid. they're they're they don't you know and i i was i'm not gonna say i was that bad but I tried to be a little more knowledgeable about it. I wouldn't just take every gearhead's advice right. from the gym. Well, I'm doing this. Well, oh, maybe I need to do that. No, no. no. Re do your own research about anything and everything. I think that's good advice. <laughs> you know, yeah. trust but verify. Yeah. You know, and then figure out what might work for you. Exactly. Yeah. So if you had to pay money to sit down and hear one person in the world speak, who would it be? In the fitness industry? Nope. Doesn't have to be fitness. Could be politics. Could be entertainment. Could be fitness. Could be whatever. 
Oh God, there's I mean, there's no one person that just, would cover well, just, any aspect. Well, you know, if you're like, hey, if you could hear one person speak, who would it be? You know, that I could sit down and pick their brain. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Trump, I would love to. <laughs> business life, I mean. He's had to deal with a lot of BS. Good. And to be able to handle that, you know, and keep moving forward. I think it would be an interesting conversation, and I don't think it'll happen. Just be- I think I think Joe Rogan wants to have a conversation, mm-hmm. but I think he may be uh, – he doesn't want the blowback that's going to come with it um, for his own personal reasons and his brand, yeah. which to an extent I can understand. But I think – they can have the conversation and not go too political, but to, because I don't think Joe Rogan wants to give him a platform that will promote him. Mm -hmm. But I think in the last 12 months, the things he said is helping promote him, whether Mm -hmm. he realizes it or not. And maybe he's doing that on purpose. I don't know. But I think there, he is an interesting man just anyway. Oh yeah. From the beginning. Yeah. You know, and he can tell you a lot of rights and a lot of wrongs and a lot mm-hmm. of things that um, I think lessons he's learned. Mm-hmm. But you're right, man, to go through the stuff that he and still smile and talk to people and he just seems unfazed. Yeah. Whether you like him or not. Yeah. You know, the guy yeah. seems unfazed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as far as the fitness industry, I'm hoping I can pick Jay's brain a little bit, a couple weeks. Uh, so uh, then. Uh, Chris Aceto, I'd love to sit down with him, which he actually trained Jay through his Olympia reign. Okay. Yeah. he's He is highly intelligent when it comes to training, nutrition, stuff like that. Remind me, Jay tore a bicep. Was that the last Olympia he won, or is that when he lost? I'll be, if honest, you remember. I'll be honest, I don't remember. Because I, I think he tore a sure. bicep in training. I don't think I'm making that up. Uh, couldn't tell you. Couldn't I'm, not, tell you. I'm not. I'm not sure on that. You're one, supposed so to be my J official. I'm not, not going to speculate if I don't know. <laughs> I think I don't think I'm making that up. Um, so can you tell everybody uh, where they can find Genesis Facebook website? Absolutely. Um, physically, we're at six seventeen Signal Hill Drive Extension. We are. If you're coming from one direction, we're around the curve from King of the Sea. Fit uh, seafood camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're coming from the other direction, we are right around the curve from the soccer complex, Statesville Soccer Complex. And um, on Facebook, uh, we're Genesis Fitness. Instagram, Genesis Fitness 247. Okay. Because um, we are open 24 7, 365, and we are the only gym around with a standby generator. Just so you know. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> when uh, power went out in Statesville last week, mm-hmm. um, called, my, called my buddy that was at the gym. I said, power just go out because I got a notification on my phone. He said, yep. I said, it only lasted for about 10 seconds, didn't it? He said, yep. That's Perfect. Good. So. And, and let everybody know again, Jay Cutler's coming. What dates and times? Jay Cutler, four-time Mr. Olympia, will be at Genesis Fitness. Here in Statesville, um, on April twentieth, he will be doing a meet and greet from two eight or sorry, ten a.m. to two p.m. Um, we are doing a ribbon cutting around twelve o'clock, so Jay will take a you know five ten minute break to do that for us, and uh, we will have food. We're gonna have food catered by Tobos. Uh, we're gonna have great food: grilled chicken, steak, steamed rice. Mm. Uh, steamed vegetables, pasta. We're going to have a DJ all day. Um, playing music, rocking out. We're going to have giveaways. So you can come and uh, register for giveaways. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to have, just got it confirmed yesterday. I'm going to have a massage therapist there doing chair massage. So she's going to be like doing $10, $15, 10 I'm minute, in. 15 minute chair massages. Um, going to have free supplement sample giveaways from Bucked Up and Cutler Nutrition as long as they last. Nice. Just got confirmed yesterday. I think they're sending me a whole pallet of 
bucked up RTD drinks. Oh, sweet. I think that's right. It's a 1,000 cans, so. That's a lot of cans. Yeah, it's a lot of cans. So we'll have, uh, you know, we'd like for each person just get one. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we don't want anybody double fisting energy drinks and training, but uh, there is no charge to meet and greet Jay. I've had that asked a couple times. Okay, good to know. Um, we will, like I said, be raffling off stuff. Uh, we'll have uh, Chris there is going to be offering his personal training. Um, he's going to be doing, you know, several sessions for people if they want them. Mm-hmm. He's going to offer training packages, um, raffling off. I believe he's getting a weight belt, and like some straps, stuff like that, Jim Reaper stuff. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, you got a lot of stuff going on. It's got a lot going on. I mean, on. really and truly, you can have, you can come out there, meet Jay, uh, get some cool free stuff, enter to win some stuff. And if for those of you who have not even um, uh, had a chance to go check out Genesis Fitness, I highly recommend it. It's worth the one-day workout. Yep. There's something in there for everybody. And also, you're supporting a local guy here who was born and raised in Iredell County. Absolutely. Who is, uh, you know, living his own dream. That's right. And we got, uh, and again, there there's no charge. I mean, I literally have been asked this like a hundred times. There is no charge to meet Jay. But uh, we are doing ten dollar day passes to work out. Okay. Everybody, anybody, everybody's welcome to work out. Um, just come in. Takes you all of about, I don't know, ninety seconds to fill out the tablet. Right. Do a night. Do a day pass. Ten bucks. You can do your workout, and if you decide to join up with us that day, you actually get that ten dollars refunded. So technically, ends up being a free workout Sweet. if you decide to join up with us. And. We will hopefully be back on here in a month or so, uh, have an announcement for a couple more goodies coming this year. Ooh, that's yeah. exciting. All right. Maybe be able to help people chill out a little bit. Okay. All <laughs> right. I, well, I can't wait to hear about that. So, hey, everybody check them out. Remember, you can go get, pick that up so they can see it. Jay right. Cutler Supplements at Genesis Fitness, which, by the way, is a dollar less than Amazon. That's this right. is delicious. We tried the Coco cereal today it was great joe i appreciate you coming on thanks for bringing jay cutler to statesville absolutely we need more big names coming around here to bring some notoriety to our wonderful hometown we're gonna try and keep it coming keep it up man yes sir all right we'll see you buddy take care everybody genesis fitness have a good one